Okay. So um, very happy to be here with you. It's evening time where we are, morning time where, where you are. Uh, and I guess we're going to talk about confidence today. And then let's cultivate our motivation and think that we will listen attentively and share together this evening so that we can become better human beings, so that we can learn how to make a, cons a positive contribution to society and to generate compassion and an open mind, two qualities that are really essential for making a positive contribution. So let's place what we're about to do within the context of helping others, of benefiting others. So not just for ourselves alone. So cultivating our motivation is really, really important um, because so often we are, we are just spaced out. We aren't even aware of why we're doing what we're doing. Yeah. And uh, then after a while, we get into a predicament and we go, how in the world did I get in this jam? And it's often because we weren't uh, aware of our motivation. You know, what was fueling us to act or speak the way we, we were acting or speaking? So... Taking some time and uh, deliberately cultivating your motivation is very, very helpful for, um, what to say, for approaching situations with a calm mind so that you can really connect with other people and, uh, and have a good outcome for yourself and for others. Okay, so okay, I mentioned before that the our motivation is really what determines the value of what we do. Yeah, not how we look to other people. So I know when you know you're a young adult, how you look to other people is of extreme importance to you. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we want to look cool. We want to, you know, have a good appearance. We want to impress other people with our athletic ability, our intellectual ability, our artistic ability, whatever it is. You know, we want to impress others. We want to uh, have a good reputation and have people praise us and approve of us and so on. But the thing is, um, when we operate from a motivation that is just wanting that, that's quite a self-centered motivation, isn't it? I want to look good. I want people to like me. I want to be popular. I want to be known for being a good this, that, or the other thing. And it's all about I, I, I. And the thing is, when we operate our lives just thinking about me, yeah, we get very confused because we start interpreting everything in the world uh, according to how it relates to me, as if I were the center of the world and other people's importance, other happenings in the world, their importance only derives from whether they make me happy or unhappy. Yeah. So that makes us oversensitive to everything. And so then instead of acting sincerely yeah, with other people 
and with sincere friendship and sincere kindness, we're mm, putting on a show to impress other people. Yeah, are you aware of this? Is this making some, some sense? And it's very fatiguing to put on a show because, you know, you're not being really genuine in your heart and you're trying to be something you aren't. And that's exhausting. And then when you make friends with people, because you've impressed them that you're a certain kind of person, then when they get to know you, they find out that, you know, you're just a regular person and you have good qualities and you have faults. And then they feel like, oh, you know, this person kind of, uh, um, they weren't really sincere. They sold me on an image of what they wanted me to think they were, but they weren't really sincere in what they said and did. Yeah. And so that, uh, you know, that makes for difficulties in relationships with other people. Mm -hmm. So I think it's very important to, to just, you know, stop trying to impress people. Because yeah. the more we try and impress people, the more we get tense and nervous and stressed out and uh, yeah. And then that feeling inside of ourselves doesn't make us very happy. And then, uh, you know, we're always doing somersaults and wheel carts to try and uh, cartwheels, I should say, um, to try and impress people. Yeah. And it's just much better just kind of be natural and um, be a friendly person. Yeah, you don't have to be anything special. Yeah. You don't have to sell yourself to anybody else. Now I can hear you already in your mind saying, but, 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 if I want to get a good job, yeah, if I want to meet the right person, if I want to get ahead in, Sing in Singaporean culture, I've got to be like this and this and this and this, you know. And even if I'm not always like that, I've got to pretend to be because otherwise nobody will hire me at the job I want. Yeah, right. And getting the job that I want to do and having a good paycheck is the total meaning of my life. Even if I'm so stressed out, I can't enjoy my life. Okay. So what's the use of that? Yeah, really, what's the use of that? None of us want to be that way. Okay. And, <laughs> and then also what happens is because we're trying to impress people, then we've got to figure out what we think they think we should be. You know what I mean? If, if I want to impress you, then I have to figure out what you want me to be. And then I have to put on the show of being like that person so that you like me or that you will hire me or you will approve of me. So then I get tangled up in I've got to be what I think you think I should be. You getting what I'm saying? Yeah. So then I'm making all these guesses of what I think you think I should be. And I'm not that. I'm not that. Anyway, you probably aren't so curious. So absolutely certain, certain what you want me to be either. Yeah. And so then I just, you know, I, oh, I said things this way. Did I say it the right way? What are they thinking of me? Maybe I said it the wrong way. They're offended. You know, oh, they want me to be a very uh, smart person. 
Oh, but I'm not so smart. They want me to be a funny person. Oh, but I'm not so funny. They want me to be athletic, but I really am not so good at that. They want me to be artistic, but I'm not good at that either. Oh, dear. You know, what am I going to do? Who am I going to be? Who's going to like me? Who's going to love me? Oh, yeah, exhausting. And it's all just going round, round, round. Me, 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 me. What do other people think of me? As if what they think of me is the most important thing in the world. Okay. Let me tell you, other people don't think about us all day long. Believe it or not, they don't sit around all day and say, what, what do I think about that person? Because they're too busy thinking about themselves. Okay? So if you're worried about your reputation, yeah, really other people don't spend so much time thinking about us. And anyway, what is a reputation? It's just other people's thoughts. Are other people's thoughts about you correct? Yeah, well, I see some people going no and some people going yes. Okay, if other people's thoughts about, about you are correct, yeah, and you believe everything people say about you, you're going to get really confused. Because I want to tell you a story of what happened to me. Okay, so. I was living in a nunnery some years back. And one day, one of the other nuns came to see me. And she said, you are such a sloppy nun. You don't keep your precepts very well. You're such a mess. Yeah, you don't do things properly. I thought you were supposed to be a good example for, for those of us who were junior to you and look at you. Okay. So that's what she said to me, more or less. She went away. Okay. So if what she said is true, how, how am I going to feel? Oh, I'm a failure. I can't do anything right. A half an hour later, Another person came to see me and said, you are such a good example of a nun. You keep your precepts very well. You're friendly. You're kind. Yeah, I really am glad you're here. Okay, so within a half an hour, one person tells me I'm a mess and I'm a failure and a bad example. And the, a half an hour later, somebody else tells me I'm a wonderful example and, and I'm a, a kind person. Now, if I believe everything everybody says about me, which person am I? Yeah? Am I the one who's a mess, who's screwed up, or am I the one who's nice? Yeah. I'm going to get really confused if I believe everything everybody says about me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's why I think it's much healthier to, inside of ourselves, cultivate a good motivation towards others. Because if we have a kind motivation towards other living beings, then you know, what we say to them will be kind, what we do will be kind, and then we don't have to worry about what they think about us. But if we're trying to impress them and make them think we're a certain way so that they'll look at us and go, wow, fantastic, yeah, then it's going to really, it's not going to be very satisfying. Okay. And anyway, when we put on an act to impress people, most people see through it. 
or even if they fall for it for a while, it's not going to last. So I'm, I really think cultivate a good motivation. Yeah. Be a kind person. Don't help others and stop worrying about what they think about you. Because you can pass your whole lifetime worrying about what others think. And believe me, they don't spend their whole life thinking about us. Okay, does this making some sense to you? So what I'm saying is don't approach life with a self-centered attitude, just thinking, me, 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 I want to have a good impression. I want to get ahead. I want this. I want that. You know, because if you approach life like that, then we basically wind up using people a lot instead of really being sincere with them. And that's not very satisfying in relationships. So, you know, we want to really have friends who like us for what we are. Not friends, friends in quotations, who like us for the act that we put on and who we try and impress them with. Okay. So this is much better that way. And also, I remember when I was a young adult, you know, so I was so worried about fitting in, you know all the different groups of people and do I fit in with this group? Do I fit in with that group? Yeah. What group do I fit in with and this and that, and you know, who's going to be my friends. And, and again, it was very interesting because I went through most of my school feeling like, you know, I just don't fit in so well with everybody else. There's all these popular people at school. You know the, the group of people who are really popular at school? Yeah. There's a group of them, a group of guys, a group of girls, and they're the popular kids who look like me. Yeah. And and I thought, oh, you know, I don't fit in with them because I was a more studious kind of thing. And I like theater and music and stuff like that. And, I, oh, you know, I don't fit in with them. And, and then it was so interesting for me because that was in high school. Then when I went to university, I started talking to other people at university and I found out that nobody felt like they fit in in high school. Yeah. Our high school is your secondary school and uh, like junior college. And yeah, that nobody actually fit in, felt like they fit in in school. It was shocking for me because I thought that everybody else, they were the popular ones and I was the one who didn't fit in. and then. Those same people who I thought were popular felt like they didn't fit in. So I sure wished I had figured that out later because then I wouldn't have worried so much about whether I fit in or not. And instead of thinking, do I fit in? I would have been more friendly with other people and recognized that they don't feel like they fit in. And so they might, you know, appreciate if somebody else came and talked to them and were kind to them. Okay. So I wish I had learned that. That would have made life a lot easier. And anyway, as we go through life, some people like us and some people don't. And then some people who didn't like us, we meet them in a different situation and we become very good friends. And other people who we thought were really good friends, time goes on and then, you know, we go in different directions. And so there's always this, everything's changing all the time. Yeah. 
So it doesn't make much sense to kind of worry about all of it. Because whatever it is, it's going to change. So I think it's much more important that we feel comfortable in our own skin. Uh, in other words, that we like ourselves. That's much more important because at the end of the day, uh, you know, we have to answer to ourselves and um, to our own conscience. And uh, what other people think really doesn't have much to do with, with that at all. Okay. Because I think we all know that we can impress people, but our motive, you know, our motivation is really horrible. It's not at all sincere. Yeah. So just having people like us doesn't mean we're successful or that we're happy. Yeah. We have to, like ourselves, we have to learn how to become our own friends and accept ourselves for who we are and stop trying to be something we aren't. Okay. And so there's different things that maybe you want to excel in and you want to do. And that's not the direction your life goes in. And that's okay. It's totally okay. You don't need to be the best. Because I know in Singapore, there is so much pressure, isn't there? You've got to be the best and you've got to have good scores. And, you know, from the time you're like four years old, your parents are already having you, you know, do have tutoring classes and revision so that you can get into a good school so that you can get a good job. And Hey, you're only four years old. Yeah. So I think much better to, uh, to be comfortable in yourself. Yeah. To like yourself. And we all have, uh, different talents and different abilities. And another thing that I've really discovered in life is that comparing yourself to somebody else or to many other people, uh-uh, don't do it, okay? <laughs> yeah, your parents may, com may compare you to other people. Yeah, when I was little, there was a family who lived uh, just across the street, they had a uh, a girl who was my age. Jeannie Gordon was her name. And I always heard, why can't you be like Jeannie Gordon? She does this and she does that. She does this. And look at you. And, you know, and don't get into any of that. Yeah. Your parents may say that. You don't need to say that to yourself. You don't need to say, why can't I be like so-and-so? Yeah, because so-and-so has their own problems. Yeah, they always say, be careful what you wish for because you might get it. Because you might think, oh, that other person, they have such a good life. I want to be like them. But you don't know what it's like to be like them on the inside. Yeah. You only know what you are like on the inside. So that's why I say it's much more important to be your own friend, to like yourself, to accept yourself. You have good qualities. And you have some faults. Great. What else is new? You're just like everybody else. Okay. So you don't need to be the best. You need to... You need to see what your passion in life is, what the thing is that you want to give to the world. What do you enjoy doing? Yeah. What are you talented in? You don't have to be the best in it, but you just, whatever it is that you have some passion for, yeah, and some aptitude for it, then do that. 
so that whatever job you choose is something that you enjoy. Yeah, don't study something that you're not at all interested in. <laughs> yeah, it just doesn't work. Yeah, so study what you're interested in. Take a job where you feel you have something to give and and uh, and something that that excites you and interests you. Mm -hmm. And it may be what your parents want you to be, and it may not be. Okay. I am not what my parents wanted me to be. Okay. I'm definitely not what they wanted me to be. Yeah. My mother wanted a daughter who cared about her hair, you know, who liked to go shopping who like to go to mother-daughter luncheons, yeah, who had a good job and was getting promotions, who always looked very beautiful, yeah. That's what my, my mother wanted me to be. My father wanted, my father wanted me to be a doctor, okay? I was supposed to be a doctor and, of course, marry the right kind of person yeah and and make a lot of money because money meant success and you know i i came into the world with my own karma yeah as kids you know what we're born as we come in with our own tendencies and so my parents had a certain vision of how their you know eldest child should turn out and they got me you know they got me. I hate going shopping. Yeah. I don't like having my hair dyed and uh, I don't even like having hair. You know, it's like very comfortable like this. You know, I became a Buddhist. My family is not Buddhist. I wasn't supposed to be celibate. I was supposed to give them grandchildren. Yeah. I'm not at all what my parents wanted me to be. But I'm happy with who I am, and I think what I do can give something to other people that can help them. And slowly but surely, my parents, over time, it took a long time, they began to, you know, respect what, what, what I did. Yeah, I wasn't who they wanted me to be. But they saw that I turned out okay. Yeah. Anyway, my brother became a doctor, so they got one doctor. And my brother and sister both had kids, so they had grandchildren. So I was off the hook. It was okay. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and as I got older and they got older, then we got along so much better. You know, for a while, it was really hard. But then, uh, you know, I'll, I'll tell you another secret. I see that there's some parents in the audience, okay? But if you give your parents some time, they'll grow up, okay? <laughs> that what they are right now, they may not agree with some of your ideas or what you want to do or your interests. But if you just, you know, don't, don't push them. Just be loving. Be who you are. Be kind to them. Take out the garbage. If you take out the garbage, your parents will love you. Okay? Because <laughs> they'll see that you care about the family. And then... You know, your parents, they'll begin over time to accept you. And you'll accept yourself for who you are. Yeah, Because trying to be who we aren't and comparing ourselves to other people, it just doesn't work. Yeah. I also remember when, uh, when I first ordained, 
So I'm giving you stories about my life because I'm a nun. So it's the same kind of thing that happened to everybody, but the the situation is, you know, being a nun. So um, when we ordain, we sit in our ordination order, okay? So there are some people who are senior to me in ordination and some people who are junior to me in ordination. So, you know, I was feeling really insecure. So I looked down the line to all the juniors and I could find something wrong with every single person. And I looked up the line and I could find something wrong with all of them too. Okay. That made me feel proud. But sometimes when I looked down the line, those people had so many good qualities that I didn't have. And when I looked up the line, they had so many good qualities I didn't have. So what's happening to me? What's wrong with me? So depending on what mood I was in, sometimes I thought the other people were fantastic. And sometimes I thought that they were losers. Okay. And then the whole time I'm comparing myself to them. Yeah. And then I get very kind of arrogant <laughs> when I when I think that I'm better and when I think that I'm worse, then I get really jealous and then I feel terrible inside. Okay. And it would just, it would change depending upon what, what mood I was in in a particular day. And that just shows that none of that is true. Because if it were externally true, well, how I thought of everybody else, then my feelings wouldn't change so much. Yeah, I would see them the same way every day. But no, no, that didn't happen like that. So then, yeah, I just decided, okay, I've got to work on myself. There were certain things about myself that I was very critical of. And I just said, I have to accept, you know, that some things I can do well and some things I can't do well. And once I started accepting the, that, then when I looked at people who were better than me, I actually felt happy and I rejoiced that they were better than me. Yeah. And then I could look up the line and see their good qualities. And I could look down the line at their good qualities without getting jealous and with just rejoicing that they had good qualities. Because I began to see that, you know, for this world to run properly, it needs many people with many different kind of talents. And if I were the best person in the world, in everything, we would be in, vir- in very dire circumstances, okay? We wouldn't have any le- electricity. If I was the best person in the world, we would have no electricity. Because all I know how to do is change a light bulb and flick the switch. I have no idea how electricity works, how to fix things, you know, when the when the electricity goes out, all that kind of stuff. I have no idea. Okay. If I were the best person in the world, we would also have no plumbing. We would have no toilets, no running water, no showers, because I have no idea how plumbing works. Okay, something in the house breaks, don't ask me to fix it. Okay, I have no idea. So I'm really glad that there are people who are better than me. Yeah, because when there's people who are better than me and they contribute to society, I benefit. Yeah. And even in the thing that I'm, you know, kind of as my speciality, I'm still glad people are better than me because when people are better than me, then I can learn something. Yeah. If I'm the best, 
then really we have problems in this world. Okay? So it's just much better. You know, what you do and what you can contribute is unique. You do it, you feel satisfied with it. And know that somebody else benefits from it, no matter what kind of occupation uh, you have or what career you have. Yeah, as long as you're not an exterminator killing other living beings. Um, yeah, as if you're doing something that helps society function, then you're benefiting other people. And if if in your job you have that motivation to benefit other people, then your work becomes part of your Buddhist practice. Because Buddhist practice is all about being of benefit, having a compassionate uh, mind and being of benefit to others. And so whatever job you have, if you do it with that kind of motivation, then you know you're benefiting others. And it doesn't matter whether they say thank you or not. Yeah, because you know in yourself that that you have this ability and you're able to to affect other people in whatever way, you know, it is that's your talent. Okay. So I, you know, understanding all this has really made me appreciate what other people do more. So especially the people who do the road work. Yeah. Have you ever thought about the people? who make the roads, yeah, or, or the people who made the, the M, uh, MR, no, M, Singapore MR. MRT, yeah, Hong Kong, it's MTR, yeah. Singapore is MRT, okay, so you ever thought about those people, or do you just drive by them, you know, they're out in the sun, you know, doing road work. Oh my goodness, how exhausting. Do you ever say thank you to them? Yeah. When you're driving and the traffic is slow or you have to stop because of some road work, do you ever roll down your window and say, thank you so much for doing this? Yeah. Do you ever thank your garbage collectors? Yeah. Do you ever? Yeah, one person. Garbage collectors are extremely important in society. If they're, if the garbage collectors, if nobody was a garbage collector, we would live in a pigsty. Yeah. So it's really, it's good that there's people who are garbage collectors. We need to thank them. Yeah. And all the construction workers. Yeah, the people who come from other countries who don't get paid the same thing as, as you do. Yeah, but they're the ones who build your flats. And you wouldn't have a place to live if, you know, people didn't leave their families in India or Philippines or wherever and come and build flats in, in Singapore. Yeah, you, you would have to build your own flat. Yeah. Could you build your own flat? Yeah. Maybe you'd have to go back and it would have to be like in the when there were kampongs. Yeah. And you had a thatched house or something. Because yeah. otherwise we don't know how to do all this kind of stuff. So, you know, when we really get a feeling for how interdependent we are with other living beings and how we all contribute. And because we all contribute, everybody benefits. Then we, uh, you know, we have some confidence that we are a useful human being that can uh, really offer something that improves the lives of others. And that's much more satisfying than climbing up the corporate ladder and getting more titles and a corner office and more money, yeah, but being very unhappy with, with who you are or what, what kind of work you're doing. Yeah. 
So really, uh, you know, take the time to figure out what, what your passion is, what you want to contribute, and then go for it. Hmm? Okay, so I've talked for a while. Uh, let's open it up for questions and maybe some answers. Right, maybe I can start with a question first. Um, I think, first of all, um, thank you so much, Venerable Children, for um, sharing um, so much um, at length with us. Um, I think I got reminded of, um, I think one of the books that you co-authored about the rules of the universe, if I'm not wrong, about how actually we are not that important, but we always think that we are important in um, um, our own lifestyle. And I think I appreciated how you talked about um, how unimportant we are um, in a very realistic manner. And um, I think it's it's important to know that also uh, so that we don't get caught up by the fact that like, you know, we think they're very important. I guess one question I have um, will be with regards to how we may be able to get to a point one day where we do not get affected by others' perceptions of us. Because personally, I am somebody who really um, derives a lot of my, I guess, satisfaction or like validation from external sources because I can't get it from within. And for the longest time ever, I, I know that it's not sustainable. I know that it's not healthy. And I know that it's also very stressful to people around me when I want them to give me that validation, right? But at the same time, I, I, I feel like sometimes it's hard for me to provide that validation for myself. And I have a lot of uncertainty in whether or not what I'm doing is good enough. So mm -hmm. I guess um, the question then will be, firstly, how, how can I get to a point where I sort of mm, am okay with myself, I'm secure, and I feel like, you know, I am good enough. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, you know, so, so I guess that, that will be the question. I think that's kind of like the root cause of why I'm seeking external validation because I can't find it from within. Yeah. So when we're, when we're very dependent on uh, wanting uh, feedback from other people and uh, wanting praise especially, then we lose touch with who we are inside. And we just take whatever pe other people think about us, we take that as the truth of who we are. But other people don't know how we're like inside. So what other people tell us about ourselves, they may have some, some good comments that it can help us to, to, um, to learn from. But basically, I think we have to learn to evaluate ourselves yeah, and to really know what's going on in ourselves and not be so dependent. Because like the example I gave you of somebody telling me, I was a wonderful nun and somebody telling me I was an awful nun. You know, if we just rely on other people to tell us who we are, then we're lost. We don't know who we are inside. Yeah. And, and so I think it's much better. It's, for me, it comes down to the whole thing of, of uh, our motivation again and, and looking. And if I have a good motivation, for doing something. And I really take the time to think about my motivation beforehand. Why am I doing this? If I have a good motivation, then, you know, then sometimes things turn out well. Sometimes I misjudge a situation. They don't turn out the way I want. But I also can't control every. Uh, all the conditions in a situation. So the important thing is that from my side, I have a good intention. I act with responsibility. And then whether things turn out the way I want or don't, or don't, I can't control everything. Yeah, that's just the way it is. But if I know that from my side, I was sincere, I was uh, responsible, I didn't cheat anybody or lie to anybody, then my whole conscience is clear. Yeah. Whereas if I cheat, if I lie, if I cover up my mistakes and don't admit them, if I try and pretend to have 
an ability that I don't have. And because of that, then whatever I'm working on doesn't turn out well because I really don't know what I'm doing. Then, yeah, uh, then again, you know, how do I feel about myself? I don't feel so good about myself when I act that way. Yeah. And also because I'm not having a good motivation, it often doesn't turn out well. Sometimes, yeah, when we have the motivation, I want to impress somebody else, it turns out the way we want, but we still aren't happy because we could receive praise from everybody in the universe. But as long as we don't like ourselves, as long as we're not our own friends, we don't have actual satisfaction. Yeah. So the way I look at it is uh, in the morning, I always cultivate a motivation not to harm others as much as I can avoid that to benefit them as much as I can and to really increase my, uh, an attitude of kindness and compassion and what we call bodhicitta and an altruistic intention to work on that every day. And then, uh, you know, evaluate at the end of the day. And sometimes, okay, I start out with a good motivation and then I got really irritated (laughs) during the day because something happened. And then I have to come back and say, okay, getting irritated. You know, I need to calm my mind down. I need to stop blaming other people because they're just doing the best they can. And the world really doesn't revolve around me so that every day things are going to happen the way I want. So, you know, just kind of, I tell myself, chill out. And, uh, you know, enjoy being alive, enjoy knowing the Buddha's teachings. Yeah. And and then there's still a sense of satisfaction at the end of the day. Yeah. Whereas if if my if my esteem and my self-confidence completely depend upon what other people think about me, you know, I never, then I never get enough praise and people never appreciate me enough and people don't love me enough. And, you know, and I, and then I have this mentality of always feeling like, you know, I, a poverty mentality. I don't have enough love. I don't have enough appreciation. I don't have enough this. I don't have enough that. Oh, the world is so unfair. Poor me. This is terrible. Ah. And how come all these other people, they're more successful than I am. They're, they're more praised than I am. They have a better reputation in society. And, you know, just... Oh, what happened to me? And then you can't even see your good qualities. You just sit there putting yourself down all day and then feeling sorry for yourself. And that's not who you are. All that garbage that you tell yourself is not who you are. Yeah. So, but if you act with a kind motivation, then... You know, then you're happy. You did what you could. And if you're responsible, you did what you could. Yeah. And and really to accept that we cannot control everybody and every circumstance. Impossible. Yeah. Does that make some sense to you? Yeah, it does. Thank you so much, Venerable. Okay. So give yourself credit for who you are. Yeah. And give yourself some credit for for what you do and what you're good at. Okay. Other questions? Uh, Venerable, 
um, I have read the report that um, the teens or the youth suicides has increased. Can you talk louder, Lizzie? Okay. Um, I've read a report that uh, the youth committing suicides has increased. And can you help to advise us, like even as family or friends, or as the, the, the person themselves wanting to commit suicide, um, can you advise us how to help them or the person to help themselves? Mm. Thank you. Okay. I think it's um, very valuable to, to treasure our life and to treasure other people's life. And I think one big factor in suicide is what I was just talking about, comparing ourselves to others and then telling ourselves, I'm a failure, I'm not good enough, I'm so lonely, nobody loves me, everybody hates me, you know. And so basically what we tell ourselves are a bunch of lies, okay? A lot of our self-talk, it's very uh, interesting, you know, watch what you think about yourself. Watch your self-talk, what you say to yourself. And a lot of this is quite negative, and none of it is true. Because we say to ourselves, oh, you know, we just, I did this exam and out of a hundred people, I came in 10th. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to come in first and I came in 10th out of a hundred. I really blew it. Wait a minute. You came out 10th. Give yourself some credit, credit for what you did. You're not a failure. And even if you blew one test, so what? Yeah. So this thing of always, you know, I should be better. I should be something else. Nobody loves me. I feel so alienated. This is all a product of what in Buddhism we call the self-centered attitude. Just thinking about ourselves. And um, there, uh, Mother Teresa, one Catholic nun, she said, when I feel lonely, give me somebody to love. When I feel unappreciated, give me somebody to show appreciation to. So instead of getting depressed and wanting more good feedback or praise or whatever it is from other people, try giving what what you would like to other people. If you want more tolerance, other people to be more tolerant of you, you be more tolerant of them. If you want people to be kinder, be kind to them. Yeah. If you want people to talk in a nice way to them, examine the way you talk and make sure you talk in a pleasing way to other people. Because the whole thing is, you know, if, if we're just absorbed about on, on ourselves and think badly about ourselves, then suicide looks like a great way out. But it's not a great way out. You don't benefit. In fact, you lose because it's a very, we have now a human life, which is very important and very, very useful, you know, for practicing the Buddhist path and for improving the kind of person we are. And whoever we were in previous lives created a whole lot of merit and did a lot of virtuous deeds because we have the life that we have. So to put ourselves down is ridiculous because whoever we were in a, in a previous life did a really good job. And now we also have this amazing opportunity with our present life. Yeah. Whereas if we just criticize ourselves or we have a very suspicious mind 
or a paranoid mind, always thinking other people are out to get us, then uh, we ruin our own life. And, and suicide, you know, can come from that. Okay. So I think, you know, it's just having a, a good outlook and, and uh, caring for other people. Instead of, you know, nobody cares about me, you know, well, do I care about other people? Yeah. I mean, for, just to give you an example of, of this, you know, for years, I remember as a teenager, I thought, oh, my parents don't accept me for who I am. And then one day I asked myself, do I accept my parents for who they are? And that really opened my mind. And I thought, no, I don't accept them. So why am I expecting them to accept me? Yeah. Or somebody at my job is really mean. And then I stop and say, well, how do I treat that person? Yeah. Do, do I praise their, their, their good qualities? Do I you know, acknowledge their uh, successes and encourage them? Or am I just like cold and rude to them because I'm jealous? Okay. So often I think that the thing is, you know, changing something in ourselves and, and also realizing that other people love us and other people care about us. Yeah. And try and see that. Instead of seeing what you're lacking, see what you have. People may not love you the way you want to be loved. They may not appreciate you for how you want to be appreciated. But people do love and appreciate you. And that, that pertains to every single one of us. So I know they, they say, uh, you know, because of COVID, and I don't know how it, how it is in, this, in Singapore, but in the States, so many, you know, schools are closed down and, you know, you have to stay home and you can't go outside and be with your friends and things like that. And so they're saying that, uh, you know, the young people are really, really, you know, kind of depressed and very unhappy and feel lonely but I think even within that, yeah, okay, so you, you can't go out and hang out with your friends, you know, at, uh, on Orchard Road or wherever you go to hang out with your friends, okay? But what else interests you? Yeah, do some of the things that you've been interested in that you've never had the time to do before that you can do at home. Maybe you can paint, maybe you can learn some music, maybe you can, you know, you can do some volunteer work over the internet too, yeah? So reach out and, and find something that, that is interesting that you can do, even if you can't go outside and be with other people, okay? So one thing we did here at the Abbey, um, you know, this was over the holidays, uh, this is um, many of the nuns wrote greeting cards and gave it to the people at the old folks home. Okay. Talk about young people feeling isolated. The old folks really feel isolated. So, you know, you write them greeting cards and, and you give it to them. Yeah. Or you call them once a week. Maybe you have an older relative who's a little bit lonely, you know, call them and talk to them. It can be really interesting talking to your grandparents and your parents if you ask them the right questions. Ask them what the world was like when they were young and have them tell you about the historical period that they lived through because things that you study in books, other people have lived through. And it's so interesting to hear their stories. Yeah, it's so fascinating. And then you get to see 
a whole other side of your aunts or uncles and grandparents that you never even knew about. Yeah. Yeah. Have them tell tell you about it. What was Singapore like 25 years ago? Or what was it like 50 years ago? It was very different than it is now. Yeah. And you may have some relatives who lived through the Japanese occupation and World War II. Find out what their experience was like. Ask them questions. It's so interesting. Yeah. So, you know, just the whole thing is basically to open our eyes and, and um, reach out and connect to other living beings. And I think if we do that, the suicide rate goes down. Yeah. Uh, can I ask a question? Okay. Uh, like, how do you give yourself a very good mindful rest? Because uh, these days we are like uh, using too much computer and phones because we have to like listen to talks or do our work. And I feel like I, I find myself very overwhelmed with information and workload. And I feel like I have experiencing this uh, burnout. So how do we like reduce this kind of burnout or these headaches? Yeah. Okay, hold on, because I only got half the question. Oh, so now we're using a lot of technology, like computers and phones, yeah. and too much information is coming in. So right. how to deal with burnout from information overload and all this technology? Oh, you don't uh, turn the computer off. Turn your phone off. <laughs> you know, you don't need to know everything. Um, and I think that this is one reason that, that we often get tired is we have too much sense stimulation. Yeah. And so sometimes you just have to turn the stuff off. And, you know, if you're checking Facebook a lot or, you know, checking social media a lot, you don't really need to do that. You don't need to find out what all your friends are doing all the time. Yeah. Learn how to be happy with yourself too. You don't need, you know, all the things that we think, oh, I have to keep up on the, you know, the latest news and the latest sports scores and the latest things that my friends are doing and, and all of that. Actually, reduce it because it does make you quite exhausted and just see what is important. Yeah. Like really in your mind, think what is important and pay in your life and pay attention to what is important and the rest the, the world will manage itself Does that makes some sense uh, yes i agree yeah thank you i think one of the key takeaways from today is that um we need to we should stop trying to put on a show to impress others because we'll get tense and nervous and stressed out and it's really just not worth it and then uh, we should also be conscious that people don't think about us all day long and what they think about us aren't always correct also. So there's no need to actually get so stressed out over what others think about us. And it's, it will be healthier to actually cultivate good motivation towards others because what we... And then um, so that what we say and do will be kind and then we also don't have to worry about what others think of us. And... We should not approach life with a self-centered attitude. And it's more important that we like ourselves rather than con continuously comparing ourselves with others because everyone has, their, everyone has their own qualities and faults. And we should really be more thinking more about what uh, we want to do for ourselves, what, what we want to give to the world and what we want to do rather than um, what others want from us. Yeah. So I think we have, uh, um, gained a lot of merits today. So may I invite Venerable to actually lead us in um, a dedication of merits? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh. So let's just sit for a minute and uh, rejoice at what we did tonight. Oh, or this morning for you. <laughs> so let's just rejoice at, at what we shared, what we learned. Yeah, what we gave, 
Now, you may say, but I didn't give anything. I just sat and listened. But let me tell you how the audience listens affects what the speaker does. Okay. So when you're listening, you're giving. And you're thinking about something new. So rejoice about that. I rejoice at the merit we created as individuals. And rejoice also in the merit that we created as a group of people. And then let's think that we dedicate the merit for the happiness of all living beings. And especially so that all living beings can be free from ignorance, anger, attachment. And so that all living beings can cultivate a mind of compassion and tolerance and kindness. You can even think of the merit that we created that we're rejoicing about as like some light in the center of your chest and then send that out to the world as we dedicate the merit for the benefit of all. Due to this merit, may we soon attain the awakened state of Guru Buddha that we may be able to liberate all sentient beings from their suffering. May the precious Bodhi mind not yet born arise and grow. May that born have no decline, but increase forevermore. Okay, thank you.